If you place buttons inside a navigation stack toolbar, SwiftUI will automatically place them based on what platform your code is running on. Now we're building iOS apps here, which means our buttons will be placed into the trailing edge of your navigation bar automatically. However, you can customize this if you want to, which means we can take a button and wrap a toolbar item around it, which lets us customize it with an exact placement. For example, we could say that this text uh, view here has a toolbar attached to it, with a button inside saying, uh, tap me, and there will be some uh, button action code here. But I want this to appear not on the trailing edge, the right hand edge for left to right languages, but on the leading edge. So I'll wrap my button in a toolbar item with a placement of top bar leading like this. And by doing that, what's being explicit, go to the leading edge in uh, that's left for left to right languages, okay? And although that works well, Usually it's better to use one of the semantic options instead, which are placements that have some kind of meaning attached to them, rather than just saying, okay, it's left or right edge. You'll see there's a whole bunch of these things here. There is a confirmation action here, for example, when you want users to agree to something, for example, a term to service your application. We have destructive action, when they wanna make a choice to destroy some data they're working with, for example, they wanna remove some data they created. We have cancellation action when they wanna back out of some changes, usually discarding what they've made so far. We have uh, navigation, for example, when you have buttons moving between various different pieces of data, like a web browser going back and forward. And these are all semantic. They don't say where they go on the, on the bar, they leave the system to decide and also style them differently. Because we're giving iOS extra information about our data here, what our buttons actually do, it can add extra styling. For example, a confirmation button here, now you'll see is slightly bolder. This is an important button, a safe button to tap, confirm this thing. And these positions automatically adapt on other platforms. And so they'll always appear in the correct place on iOS, macOS, watchOS, and visionOS, or who knows what in the future, okay? So they're very, very helpful. Now, if you need the user to decide between saving a change or discarding it, you might want to add an extra modifier here, which is navigation back uh, bar back button hidden. This thing here is quite a long winded one, but it means the back button has gone away for this view so they can't press back until they've made a choice, perhaps cancel or uh, save for example. Now if you want multiple buttons with the same placement, you can either repeat toolbar item again and again. So I might say let's have top bar leading here, and I'll just copy and paste the same thing. Uh, and we'll do like, or tap me. You see both buttons appear on that leading edge, or you can use a special extra view called a toolbar item group, which looks like this. And our toolbar item group, with a placement of uh, uh, top bar leading, and then have two buttons inside that one group. As you can see, both these options produce exactly the same result.